the mid-1990s, an ordinary American man named Stanley Meyer began making outrageous claims regarding his invention of an automobile that used water as fuel instead of oil. Despite counter-arguments from renowned scientists and engineers, Meyer stood by his invention until the day he died. However, mystery surrounds his sudden, unexpected death in 1998. Was it a brain aneurysm, the current accepted theory, or was it foul play at the hands of the powerful oil industry? In this video, we will explore the bizarre case of Stanley Meyer and his water-powered car, and allow you to decide what, or who, was responsible for his strange death. First, we need to explore the background of this case, and the series of events that led up to Stanley Meyer creating his invention. Stanley Allen Meyer was one of two sets of identical twin brothers who were born on August 24th, 1940. Stephen Meyer is his identical twin brother. Meyer was born and raised on the east side of Columbus before his family relocated to Grandview Heights, which is also where he completed his high school education. After a short time there, he enlisted in the military instead of continuing his education. He was the inventor of a number of patents, including several in the field of oceanography, heart monitoring, and validating banking systems. It took only eight months to process all of Meyer's patents, which is a rather quick amount of time. Given that there were over 200,000 patent applications in the queue at that point in time, it is evidence that the patent office believed Meyer's technology to be reputable and of high quality. Meyer was an employee of the Batelli Foundation in Ohio, and he was also an employee of NASA, where he worked on the creation of the Gemini Project. In 1973, the United States, led by President Richard Nixon, began providing support to the State of Israel to the dismay of other Middle Eastern nations. Members of the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries initiated a trade embargo with much of the Western world as a result, increasing oil prices by 300% on average. This crisis inspired Stanley Meyer to begin exploring alternative fuel sources, such as water. He began work on his water-powered device, and after many failed attempts, was finally, according to him, able to successfully produce a machine that could run entirely by using water as fuel. Mayer referred to the part of his invention in which electricity is carried through water to make hydrogen and oxygen as a fuel cell, or a water fuel cell, in several of his patents. Mayer claimed that his water fuel cell powered a June buggy, which he showed off in a news segment on an Ohio television station. According to Mayer, it was possible to travel from Los Angeles to New York with only 22 US gallons of water using his machine. Mayer explained that he swapped out the spark plugs for injectors that fed a hydrogen and oxygen mixture into the engine chambers. To generate usable power, a water fuel cell would first use electrolysis to separate water into During hydrogen. During an interview in the academic gas, publication Burning Nature, the in the science writer Phil Ball Ball dismissed Mayer's claims as pseudoscience arguing that it's not easy to establish how Meyer's car was meant to work, except that it involved a fuel cell that was able to split water using less energy than was released by using recombination of the elements. Crusaders against pseudoscience can rant and rave as much as they like, but in the end, they might as well accept that the myth of water as fuel is never going to go away. There have been no investigations of Meyer's inventions that have been published in the scientific literature or been subjected to a peer review. In 1996, process. Stanley Meyer's Meyer faced allegations of fraud from two water investors to urban legend in Nature Art of promising the opportunity to do business in water fuel cell technology. Michael Lafton, a professor of electrical engineering at Queen Mary University of London and a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, was so set to inspect his car as part of the legal process. Mayer, however, provided what Professor Lafton called a lame excuse on the days of the examination and was thus not permitted to continue with the test. On March 20, 1998, in the Gross City Cracker Barrel, Stanley Allen ordered him to pay $25,000 to the two investors. And two Belgian investors lifted glasses in celebration of the culmination of more than 20 years of research and tinkering. 
Stephen Mayer, Stanley's brother, recounted what occurred on that evening. Stanley took a sip of cranberry juice, then he grabbed his neck, bolted out the door, dropped to his knees, and vomited violently. I ran outside and asked him what's wrong. He said that was his dying declaration. The unexplained passing of Stanley Mayer at the age of 57 put a halt to work that, had it been validated, may have eliminated the need to rely on fossil fuels. People who knew him say that his work attracted attention from people all over the world, including mysterious visitors from other countries, government surveillance, and substantial takeover proposals. What occurred with water fuel cell was in the fact that once they understood uh, was actually occurring, then under the U.S. national security uh, mandate, uh, I have no decision of power of whether or not the military or NASA or the federal government will utilize the technology. They can utilize it in any way they so desire. The death of Maya kicked off a three-month inquiry that captivated and fascinated Grove City Police. In the end, the coroner's report cited a brain aneurysm as a cause of death for Myers. There are many people who believe that this is not the case, and that he was in fact murdered by wealthy oil tycoons in an attempt to suppress his creation. According to Grove City Police Lieutenant Steve Robinette, who was in charge of leading the investigation into Myers' death, said, Myers' death was laced with all sorts of stories of conspiracy, cloak and dagger stories. Stephen Mayer was astounded by the reaction of the Belgians the following day, perhaps even more than he had been by the collapse and subsequent passing of his twin brother. I told them that Stan had died and they never said a word he recalled. Absolutely nothing. No condolences, no questions. I never trusted those men ever again. It is theorized by many that the oil companies, terrified that Mayer's invention would put them out of business, had poisoned him on the night of the 20th. Many of these individuals subscribe to other conspiracy theories relating to the idea of free energy suppression by governmental and scientific agencies. It is thought that the suppression has been going on since the middle of the 19th century and that it has been carried out by a variety of government agencies, corporate entities, special interest groups and fake investors. It is commonly thought that the special interest groups are affiliated with the fossil fuel or nuclear industry the economic model of which would be negatively impacted by the proposed changes. Some claims of suppression say that peer review and academic pressure have been used by the scientific community to control and stop research into alternative methods of energy production. In addition, many people believe that technologies are already in existence that are capable of extracting considerable power from pre-existing unconventional Absolutely energy free. sources that these devices are being kept perhaps. secret. Stanley Mayer, Eugene Malov, and Nikola Tesla are three notable individuals who are said to have been threatened, harassed, or killed for their work. What do you think happened in the case of Stanley Mayer? Was he murdered by the oil companies out of fear that his invention would cripple their industry? Or was it a brain aneurysm due to chronic high blood pressure? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.